So, dear listeners or listener, uh, thank you for choosing our podcast, which is a podcast where we give you a glimpse into the world where solutions outnumber the problems. And today we have two lovely guests with us. We have Ute Latzel and we also have Sylvia Hutnik, who are going to talk with us about, we'll see, oh, we will actually see, because my first question is actually, what is the challenge or the problem that you are tackling and with what solution? I'm from the um, Umbrella Association of the German Mother Centers and uh, our uh, problem we are tackling with is that uh, women still are under, underrepresented uh, in uh, well, decision maker positions and uh, also that uh, because they don't have the time because they all do the care work at home you heard about the gender care gap and all that so these are the issue we are in and we want to solve I am not sure everybody heard about the gender care gap. What is it? <laughs> okay, the gender care gap shows that a woman is doing much more care work than a man. It's more than 40% more care work are doing from uh, women than from men. So that's the gender care gap. And care is what? I am what, is <laughs> what is care? <laughs> Sylvia, what is Sylvia. care? <laughs> um, yeah, the definition generally is of uh, working for free for your family. But of course, it's uh, uh, not only the definition of it. The care work is generally the emotional work and work based on the family and house working. And uh, it's also another one, it's the professional, uh, like uh, babysitters, but also teachers, etc. Generally, the work that is for others. So what is it that you do, Sylvia? Because I think some of our listeners may know you as a writer. Mm -hmm. But I suppose that this is not the part of your activities <laughs> that we're going to talk about today. Yeah, um, I'm a feminist since I was 15 and I start... Um, my uh, activism in an anarcho-feminist group called Emancipunks and uh, we are very artistic and performance group but also did some of the projects and social campaigns about uh, um, sexual violence, um, rapes, especially in the public sphere. Uh, in the city, for example, but uh, um, uh, in 2006, uh, uh, I started to have the Mama Foundation and I was uh, a leader of this group for 11 years. And uh, yeah, we uh, we did lots of campaign about, for example, the care work, but also generally uh, to empowerment the motherhood in Poland. As a feminist, it was very difficult because in Poland we have the culture of Catholic Church and also very conservative way of thinking about men and women in the family. So we started to redefinition the motherhood, not only something that you are doing for the others, but motherhood is also that is uh, uh, that could be a powerful for you, for your values, for your identity and for your life. So, um, yeah, for 11 years, we try to change the uh, not only stereotypes about mother, but also law in, uh, uh, in Poland. Right. So what are the um, I'm just thinking about this um, unequal distribution of care. Uh, we were talking about motherhood. There is also this um, uh, phenomenon with with the uh, more aging society that also women take care of their elderly parents. Um, so apart from the 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 everyday chores like you know doing the dishes even if you have a dishwasher it's boring mm -hmm. um but you know doing the dishes or cleaning or whatever you also have this care part where you take care of your kids you also take care of the of the uh, of your um house or home in general and then you take care of uh, probably of your parents when they need mm -hmm. help what I was wondering if you could um, talk a little bit about what are the factors that contribute 
to the persistence of this unequal distribution. And I really would like you, you know, obviously we can say it's a patriarchal no. whatever, but that's, you know, this is not, I, I would mm -hmm. love to talk a little bit more, you know, practically, mm -hmm. after all we said women are practical. So a little bit more practically, like how come this is still the case? And we are, I think it's also important to say that uh, Ute, you work in different countries, but mostly in developed countries, mm -hmm. and 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 so do you, Sylvia. So I think we are. Th this is just a small disclaimer for the listeners. We're talking about the factors in the developed countries, mm -hmm. right? So what would that be? What contributes to this persistence of the unequal distribution of care? Uta. Well, I think um, what happens in Germany is, for example, when um, a woman is pregnant. And uh, they decide in the partnership, for example, uh, who stays at home with the child. Normally, it's the woman because she earns less money than the men. So the gender pay gap also is part of this uh, gender care gap problem. That's a second reason, I think, that uh, still um, the society is thinking that it has to be the mother staying at home uh, with uh, with children um, because she's the one who gave the birth. That's her um, way of life. It is really important that you say uh, before about the economical mm -hmm. level, stereotype uh, level, but it's also a cultural level. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, the stereotype is also based in our families. For example, from my example, uh, I see even if I'm really into the care uh, and feminist work, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I still see that uh, because of my mother and my grandmas always doing this care work, so I also should do this. It's a kind of a family tradition. And it's really hard to say that, okay, that's enough for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I can also do it, of course, but uh, I want you to, to be a part of it. You means uh, children, uh, partners, etc. The situation that it gives us a, 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 a um, huge example, especially on the pandemic, pandemic time, mm -hmm. when everybody was in home. And well, we still get the dishes even if mm -hmm. we are on Zoom all the time. So uh, there are lots of uh, statistics about who did it uh, when everybody was mm -hmm. in the home. So, well, um, the answer is, of course, uh, more women than men. Uh, so it's still something that we can't refuse. We can't mm -hmm. say, OK, that's that's enough for us. And yeah. I think also when you started to uh, stay at home, you um, you start to um, uh, to do everything at home. You care about your children, about the household. You make the um, uh, uh, when you go to the supermarket, you have everything in your head. The birthdays of your family, what to do next. That what we are calling mental load. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you are running. Um, um, yeah, and um, then you are in this situation that uh, um, you 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 maybe you you don't um, uh, have the time to give up because everything is in your head and not yeah. in the head of your partner, for example. So you're still yeah. running, R running through the, all yeah. of the little things mm -hmm. you have to remember, mm -hmm. like a manager of mm -hmm. your house. Who are the main actors that can change it? Because my intuition is that it's not only up to women. Uh, I agree with it, but on the other hand, we know the situation and we know the history of feminist movement that even if we said, oh, men also allowed, please do the revolution together, still we as a women had to do this. And it's, of course, it's another thing on our list do the dishes do the revolution <laughs> change your family i know this uh this equality way of thinking is uh, not for all of the families because of conservative and right movements and values etc but on the other hand i think this this is well more or less the only thing that uh, we have to start uh think about the care work and family Yes, and also <clears throat> um, to change um, the working part of life that uh, the 
that it is uh, more easier possible to mix uh, work and um, care work uh, for both, for men and women. Uh, because in Germany, uh, for example, still you have meetings like five o'clock at the afternoon. So, uh, and you have to go. But if you have family, so you you can't go. And so there has to be a big change uh, also. And these are, I think, um, uh, the whole society has to work on it. Like uh, working, uh, working part of the society also the. Law, the, the law has to change. The uh, you can we can talk about a thirty-two hour week, for example, who could help a lot, which can help a lot for uh, this. And uh, well, there can be lots of uh, possibilities, <laughs> but you have to want it. I, I'm thinking about uh, uh, one more thing. Like w we understand that probably many women would like for this to be less on on their uh, backs and hands and heads how why is it important for the whole of the society um, because i think we can make this um, hypothesis that it is important for everyone it's not just women's thing mm. but why why do you think should others want women to do less of unpaid care work we have to change it because uh, we all need care We all want, will be ill someday. We all will go, uh, we all die one day. And when we are dying, we want to have people caring about us, not robots, you know. And uh, also uh, we are living in an elder um, society and there are not enough people to make the work. So the society needs uh, women to work And if women are uh, doing the uh, the homework, they don't have the time to work. So we have to share the care work. Everybody has to do it, so that we can uh, we that we can live in a healthy society, when uh, that the people who does this work, this very very important work, uh, gets enough money. Because if they don't get enough money mm -hmm. for it, they uh, won't do it. And so we have uh, we don't have enough people people who doing it. Also in privacy. Um, that uh, we have a system that the person who is doing the care work in privacy at home gets some money for it or a pension or something that it is uh, worth to do it. So I think it, we have to change it. We have to go to this, that we could still live in 20, 30 years or in 10 years in a healthy, uh, good uh, quality society. Mm. Right. So now, dear listener, you know what to do almost. <laughs> so my my last question is, um, okay, let's say I've just listened to this conversation and I got really inspired and I want to do something about that. What would be your advice? What can I do? Well, the first step is to know what is your situation and situation in your home because the revolution starts in very little step. And uh, uh, for example, you can write every day what you did for your home or for your family. Uh, if you live alone, so start to uh, think about your care work for the others, for example, for your elderly parents or for cats uh, on, at your back, uh, backyard and start to think about the care work, what you are doing. And if it's an, uh, uh, enough for you, start to think about the other people that uh, that are around you, what they are doing, is they are doing anything, <laughs> and start to talk with them about it. For example, if you are living with somebody, you can always say like, I don't like, I don't know, going to school with our uh, kids. Maybe you can do it and I'll do the dishes because I know you don't like it. Start to uh, talk about it. It's not another way of fighting between men and women and the others. Uh, this is something that should be done. So let's try to uh, think about it 
and let's try to decide what uh, what exactly we have to do, but uh, do it equality in equality way of thinking. Yes, and if you are in a decision pos uh, uh, if you are a decision maker, for example, in a big company, you can change there the system how to work that you can share uh, work uh, and uh, household and caring at home, and also. Um, pay uh, women and men for the same work at the same way. And uh, so you can do uh, a lot of things um, in privacy, but also in your uh, working situation. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much for this conversation. And thank you for uh, listening to us. Uh, you will be able to find information about uh, Ute Latzel and Silvia Hutnik at ashoka.org website, where you can read their profiles because they are both Ashoka fellows. Um, you can also, in the description of the podcast, you can also find uh, links to the organizations and their website, so you can read a little bit more um, about what they do, because obviously half an hour is totally not enough to talk about <laughs> everything that you do. And... Um, This podcast was produced by Anja Lusarenka uh, and hosted by me, Agata, and hope to hear you soon. Bye.